in the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. That's 1800s. It's a handmade spike and it's really crude. Probably not made by a blacksmith. This was probably the farmer out here beating on stuff, trying to keep his farm up and running. Homemade spike, 1800s. I was out here metal detecting one night and it was a dark, cold night and my fingertips were burning the ground had just thawed, and I wanted to get out there. And I had been detected late, late into the night, and I wasn't finding anything, and I was almost ready to give up and go home. And in the dark, I got a good signal. And I dug a hole, and I started feeling around in the hole, trying to figure out uh, if there was anything good. And I felt something round, which is, very exciting in metal detecting. So I turned on my headlamp, and in the, the dim glow of, of the headlamp, I saw disappointment. I thought it was a coin, but it wasn't a coin. I thought, well, it's just a washer. It's just a modern day washer. So I took the washer, and I almost flung it off into the darkness, never to be seen again, but something said, no, put that in your pocket, look at it later, it might be something. Do you know what it is? It's a dandy button, a 1700s dandy button, look. Yeah, you see, a dandy button is a copper button that's gold plated and there's still a little bit of gold left on this and they're all about this size and they're paper thin. Now if you look at this guy and every other guy in this book, nobody is wearing bright gold stamped buttons because by the 1800s these things were pretty much out of style. Here's some pictures of what these things look like um, when they come out of the ground. So they're covered with dirt. You can barely see that they were gold plated. Most of them, well, all of them have a stamped pattern that's been hammered into them. Um, they're paper thin and on the back they have an attachment point where the hardware was soldered on. And if you look at this one right here, this one doesn't have that because it fell off and that's why it was in the field. So why did I find a 1700s personal item? Uh, in a field. Nobody lived here in the 1700s. Eight, this is 1860s farm. I think the answer is right here on this map. So if you look at this map right here, you'll see that the names of everyone and where they lived and where their properties were are carefully laid out. And we can see that this button right here was found on the farm of L. Woodward. Levi Woodward, 1872.
So the reason why I think this 1700s button came from Levi Woodworth is because he was a farmer that lived by himself. His wife had died, his kids had moved away. He lived way out in the middle of the country. Why would you take a three day trip into town to go buy a button? Any button would have worked. And he was the type of guy that was very simple, very hardworking. He worked hard, he never wasted anything. So if you had an old button, like some ancient 1700s button, you used it because you were a farmer. So who was Levi Woodward? Well, he was an old farmer that lived on the farm in the 1860s and the 1870s. Now, the federal census was done in 1870, um, August 23rd, which was a Tuesday, and it was compiled by a man named Mr. Brock. And Mr. Brock came right down this road, right here. He came right down this road on his way to Levi's house to collect information. Now, I know that he came down the road this way because the names at the top of the list the census are the names at the top of the map. So he was traveling um, in that direction. Now we have very little information about Levi Woodward, but I can tell you that when he died, he owned $128 of animals. And on his probate, it says that he had one red cow, a red and white cow, a spotted cow, another red and white cow, he had four calves, one pony, and there's a side note on his, on his probate, said that after the sale, one cow had died and one cow had colicked. Okay. Now, he died in 1876, and his doctor was H.K. Wells, and he owed the doctor $16 in medicine. Furthermore, he had two stacks of rye, one stack of wheat, and one stack of oats. Now, on his, on his will and probate, all of the stuff was sold and, 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 and auctioned off to pay for his funeral. Um, there is only one item on there that was actually worth something that wasn't farm equipment. And the item was a watch. He had a, had a $10 uh, watch. So it looks like he was the only person that ever lived there. It's always been just the corner of a farm field. So if we go out there and detect, I'm pretty sure that we can find items that were dropped by him personally. Uh, and that's very exciting in metal detecting. So I'll see you on the farm. It's in there. The house is in there. I see two pits. One is an outhouse, which I don't have time to dig right now because it takes a long time to do that. And then there's a depression with some bricks in it. So that may be a trash pit. So it's time to get serious. I got to put the camera away and get working because if it is a trash pit from the 1800s, then that will give us something that will connect us to the life of this Levi Woodworth guy. I'm done digging and I found a bunch of stuff, which is, you know, no doubt, I think 1860s, 1870s. Um, I scared myself because when I was digging these, 
his bones were coming up and and I had some I had some spare ribs and and spare ribs they looked like human bones I thought I accidentally dug into somebody's grave but then I remembered um, the the grave of, of, of Levi Woodworth is, is over there in the cemetery we're gonna go there in a second so he wasn't buried out here and besides why would you bury somebody and then dump a bunch of bricks on top of them now I know what you're thinking you can't find bones from the 1860s animal bones I can assure you professional archaeologists that do Civil War stuff find bones in uh, in pits mixed with Civil War ration tins so that's a fact yeah, so it's likely that this right here was cut by by the actual farmer. If you look at this cut right here, do you see how do you see how uneven that is? The USDA would never allow that today. And the reason why is because this was cut from from the beef carcass while it was hanging up. So the farmer was sitting there holding the leg and sawing with the bone saw, and that's why it, it's at this. That's why it has this like angular jagged cut right here. And you can still see some of the the saw teeth on here. So it was a pretty coarse grade saw. Okay, so here we see a great example of the two different types of bones right here. Uh, you can see this outside here is, um, that is compact bone and the inside is spongy bone. And so these things were probably used to make soup because there'd be like a lot of flavor inside um, all those little pockets right there, which are called um, like trabeculae. And um, they're full of um, bone marrow and fat and protein. So this right here was some type of like soup bone, as was this uh, cow joint right here too. Up next, we have a really nice uh, spoon right here. Now this spoon has a maker's mark on it and it says L, L, and Elton. And so that was like some some uh, spoon, some cutlery company that was in business around like, uh, like I think like uh, eight, 1850s uh, to like uh, 1880s. So um, it's a very flimsy spoon and uh, this is what it looked like uh, brand new. Levi Woodward has some really nice stuff. This is a stone pitcher, and it would have looked like this, brand new, right here. And so this is a high quality item. Like if I had this in my kitchen, I'd be pretty happy with this. It cost about $35 if you bought it brand new. It looks like a flower pot, but it's not. It's a stone mixing bowl. So another high quality item. I'd love to have this in my kitchen. Um, these people weren't necessarily poor. They didn't have anything, but they weren't necessarily poor. Now here is my favorite. It's a stone um, crock or stone like jug, but it's got this um, like cobalt coloring on it. And uh, this is what this looked like brand new. Here we see a ceramic handle to like a little milk thing right here. So this is what um, this would have looked like brand new. Onto the glass. This is the base of some elegant looking something. Uh, from the kitchen inside the house. I don't know what this is. Maybe somebody can tell me what this is. I can't figure it out Nice piece of embossed glass. This bottle right here was cough syrup and it says Dr. Jane's Expectorant and that was around in like 1840s, so it's a shame. I couldn't find the whole bottle, but um This is this definitely tells us uh, an age an age range now. This is my favorite it's turning purple, so it must have been outside for, for a long time before it was thrown away. Um, I found this about three feet down, and I think it's like a lid for some type of dish. Um, I can't quite place it, but it's, it's a beautiful purple color. Onto the big stuff. This is part of a plow or a cedar or maybe a potato planter. And so this must have been some real old obsolete junk in order to be thrown away like this. Um, I think that it was part of like a walk behind plow that had a wheel on it. And it's probably really annoying to use this. So when it fell apart, um, it was just thrown out. Looks like it's part of like some kind of like adjustable wagon seat or something like that. I think it was like the springs for the wagon that you would sit on. Um, then I have a wing nut threaded bung plug. <laughs> I don't know, that's what I call it. And here we have um, freshwater clams. I find these a lot. People ate these. I've never eaten freshwater clams, but um, that was, I guess that was your seafood back then. So it's very, very common to find these things all over old homesteads, even though we're miles away from the ocean. Okay, so here we see fragments of the life of a farmer that lived uh, around the 1860s, and he had some really nice stuff. I would love to have some of that stuff in my kitchen. Amazing. Oh, 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 oh.
Go dog, go. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Look at this place. Like it's the original country cemetery. I knew this place was here, but I never stopped to think about it. These monuments are so old that like they're they're tipping over. Yeah, some some of these things are tipping over because well, that one's 1822. Look at this war veteran and it's uh it's falling apart to put this in perspective this guy right here this robert thompson guy he left ireland before the potato famine here it is this is the one woodward okay so you can barely read it it says l woodward and he was born in 1820 something I can't read it but and it is true he did have a son and yeah that's what the book said his his son was Franklin son of L Woodworth it says beautiful uh, something something to earth to blossom in heaven I wish I could read what that says all right well that was a fascinating adventure thank you for joining me on that um, I've got a whole bunch more planned, so stay with me. One more thing before I leave. Do you see that old junky barn back there? On the 1800s map, it says that there's a cemetery here and a, and a schoolhouse over there. And that barn doesn't look right. Let me, let me show you. Do you see the top right there, how it has that bell tower thing up top? Why would a barn have a bell tower on it? And you look over here, you see those windows? Let me get a close up. Yeah, what's up with that? Why would a barn have windows on it? Three big windows. How about that chimney up there? You ever seen a barn with a chimney? Okay, so we have a bell tower, we have a chimney, and we have windows. It's obviously a barn, but if you ask me, I think that barn has been repurposed, and I think that's gotta be the old 1800 schoolhouse.